Boxing with Bella. My name is Bella and we have a special guest here today. Tell us your name and age. My name is Jeanette and I am seven years old. We are going to do our first unboxing today to discover what miracles Jesus did. And today is our first miracle of Jesus. Hey Bella, let's open up the box. I'm so excited. Sure, let's go. <laughs> What do you think these things are? Maybe somebody getting married? Yeah. Have you been to a wedding before? Yes. Was there, was there a meal? Yes. Do you have plenty of food and drinks? Of course. <laughs> what if the wedding didn't have enough food and drinks for everyone else? How would you feel? I'll feel sad and starving. I'll feel bad for some people that didn't get any drinks and stuff. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> Hello kids and welcome back to IDMC Kids Church. I'm Kefit. I'm Angelica. We are so glad that you can join us for our series on the miracles of Jesus. That's right. Jesus performed so many miracles. Some may think Jesus is like a magician. But Jesus wasn't performing magic tricks. It was truly a miracle because nobody could ever do what Jesus did not even the greatest magician. So, it has to be the power of God that enabled Jesus to do all these miracles. I wonder what miracles we are going to tell the kids today. Hmm. But before that, let's stand up and worship God. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty There's nothing my God cannot do, that's true My God is so big, so strong and so mighty There's nothing my God cannot do, that's true The mountains are His, the valleys are His The stars are His handiwork too My God is so big so strong and so mighty There's nothing my God cannot do That's true Let's sing it again, shall we? My God is so big So strong and so mighty There's nothing my God cannot do That's true My God is so big So strong and so mighty There's nothing my God cannot do that's true, the mountains are his, the valleys are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big. <coughs> I'm alright. So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. That's true. So to start off this series, today has to be the very first miracle that Jesus did. Boys and girls, earlier on you saw the unboxing with Bella. Can you remember all the clues for our story today? The clues were a bride and groom that represents wedding. In today's story, we are going to learn about a wedding that Jesus and his mother attended. Let's listen to hear what happened at the feast following the wedding. There was a wedding in Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother Mary was there. Jesus and some of his disciples were also invited. Maybe Mary was helping out with the wedding feast. Perhaps she was friends with the young couple's parents, or maybe they were even related. Weddings were fun and joyous occasions back then, just as they are now. In Bible times, 
Weddings were a huge celebration that could last up to a week. Guests would eat and drink and celebrate the occasion. In the middle of the party, for whatever reason, <gasps> the wine ran out. Uh-oh. Just like a birthday cake is the most important thing in a birthday party, wine was very important in a wedding celebration in those days. So running out of wine would have been very embarrassing for the couple. Also, with nothing left to drink, guests would have to leave early, cutting the celebration short. That's right. So Jesus' mother Mary went to Jesus and said, they have no more wine. And Jesus replied, dear woman, why do you bring me into this? My time has not come yet. Whoa, this is getting interesting. First of all, why would Jesus call his mom woman? Hmm. Before you get agitated about that, Jesus spoke in Hebrew with his mother. In the language and custom of that time, it's like calling someone man. So it was actually being respectful to someone. Oh, then why did Jesus say, my time has not yet come? Remember, Jesus was God himself on earth. He could perform any miracle he wanted on earth, but he knew it was not quite the time to make it known to everybody that he actually was God in a human body. Oh, so it wasn't time for Jesus to shine. Uh, sort of. So back to the wedding. After hearing what Jesus said, Mary turned to the servant and said, do whatever he tells you. Nearby were six stone water jars. The jars were used for special washing. Jesus told the servants, fill the jars up with water. You got it. So they filled them up to the top. Then he told them, now dip some out and take it to the person in charge of the dinner. Hang on a minute. Didn't you just say those jars were used for special washing? What kind of washing? <laughs> in those days, people traveled on donkeys and on dusty roads. When they arrived at the wedding feast, they would dip their dirty hands into the water to wash off the sweat and grime for the day. Oh dear, that's like offering a cup of bath water to a guest in your home. Imagine being the servant who had to hand a cup of washing water to the man in charge. Yikes! Amazingly, by the time the servant served the man in charge, the water had turned into wine. The person in charge tasted the water <gasps> that had been turned into wine. He didn't realize where it had come from, but the servants who had brought the water knew. Then the person in charge called the groom to one side. He said to him, everyone brings out the best wine first. They bring out the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink but you have saved the best wine until now. That is such an amazing miracle. And it was Jesus' first miracle. Can you imagine how the bride and the groom must have felt when they ran out of wine? Imagine this, you are at your own birthday party. Then you realized you forgot to buy a cake and there's no cake to celebrate your birthday. You can't blow a candle on the cake Nobody can sing a happy birthday song to you. And no dessert. <gasps> I'm sure you would panic. And if Jesus were there, he would probably make a cake appear for you. Instant. That would be so cool. Haha, <laughs> that's exactly right. Jesus saved the day. That was the first of Jesus' miraculous signs. Jesus showed his glory by performing the miracles and his disciples put their faith in him. Wow, this was probably the most important moment for the disciples. When they saw what Jesus did, they really knew who he really was, that he was more than a great teacher. Boys and girls, let's take a look at our memory verse for today. Hi, Tammy here. John 20 verse 31 says, 
But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in His name. Let's read that again. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in His name. John 20 verse 31magic trick. Eh, wait, no, no, I meant science experiment. Hmm, <laughs> yes. Did I say magic trick? Who said magic trick? Hmm. Well, I have two jugs here. I'm trying to see if I can do what Jesus did. I want to turn water into wine, too. See, this is a jug of water, and this is an empty jug with nothing inside. Now, I'm going to fill this empty jug with this water, and let's see what happens. Great, purely water. Let's see what happens now. Abracadabra, I'm doing some magic trick. Oh, no magic trick, I meant just something. What do we have here? Some fine wine for you and I. <laughs> Wanna have some? Well, let me taste and see if it's wine. Hmm. I think it's water, actually. <laughs> well, I tricked your kids. <laughs> you can't just change water into wine because I'm not Jesus. But let me show you what I did. I actually put a drop of liquid coloring right at the bottom of this empty cup. So when I turned it over, you wouldn't think that there is anything in the jug at all. Then I poured the water into the empty jug with liquid coloring at the bottom. It mixes the water and it changes the color. Now, isn't that cool? It's a smart science trick. Now you can trick your parents at home too. Now, the real question is, can we actually turn water into wine like that? No, I don't think so. And that's why it's called a miracle. Hello guys, I'm Fun Fun the Bunny. Did you know why Jesus performed miracles? He did miracles to show us that He is the Son of God. Miracles are signposts or signboards that help point us to God. Look, this is a signpost that shows Dream World is ahead. This signpost is not the destination, but it shows you that you are on the right track, heading towards Dream World. So, I'm going this way. Let's pray now, kids. Dear Jesus, thank you for showing us all the signs that you are the Son of God. We believe in you because nobody could do what you do. By turning water into wine, you showed us that you could turn something that is not great it is something wonderful. Help us to trust and obey you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus revealed he is God, and as God, he controls all of his creation. He can change anything in his creation, physical things and spiritual things. He has the power to change water to wine, but he also has the power to give new life to people. He has the power to forgive sin and give eternal life. What part of your life do you want Jesus to make new and better? Will you ask him to change you? Boys and girls, it's time for us to go. We hope you enjoyed today's lesson. 
Make sure you tune in next week to learn more about Jesus' miracles. See you next time.